Well, I'm out here in my backyard. It's January 31st. Beautiful day. It's been a little chilly, but now it's nice. And so I'm gonna dig into some of these hives. But before I do that, if you go down below and hit the like button, I'd appreciate it. Help push this video out to more people. I've already been through these colonies over here, these three. Uh, they're all looking pretty good. This one right here, not long ago, was just a medium uh, a couple months ago. And I put the deep on top of it and they're moving up into that one. The one in the middle there is kind of interesting. The bees have kind of chosen this right here as their entrance now, this upper entrance. But that colony has a lot of bees in it and they're doing well. And you can tell this one over here is really rocking and rolling. Uh, they're doing great. Uh, those two boxes are, are pretty full of bees and uh, we're gonna have to split this thing as soon as we possibly can. I'm also seeing drones, which I've kind of seen drones, it seems like all along, but, but they're getting to be pretty prevalent now. But the first colony I wanna go through with you guys is this Appen May hive here. It's been a while since I've been through it. I don't know when the last time I did a hive inspection on this colony was. They've been very active, uh, very busy. The bees have been bringing in pollen. And I've seen some drones in and out of here. So let's crack this thing open, see how they're doing. If you're wondering why this hive is sitting at an angle to the fence right here, it's because I, I put the stand too close to the fence and so I couldn't pull the tray out on the bottom. So I'm gonna release the lid here on the Appen I do like the design of these Appen hives. I actually received my seven frame Appen that was ordered at the Hive Life Conference and I'll be uh, playing with it some this spring. But I've had this thing here for probably a year and a half maybe, uh, pushing two years now. I've been impressed with it. The bees seem to do well in it, uh, but they've got everything glued down. Even if you look right here, you probably can't see, but in the little feeder, the bees have got it propolized. All the little air vents right here are propolized and down here, the little feeder is just glued down and all on the edges is propolized as well. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what we got. These bees have historically been a little bit feisty, but I hope I can work them without the jacket. I can tell they're all the way up in the top box. Now last year I had to, I kind of had to fix the situation in this colony. They were trying to requeen and or something or supersede and I did a video on it. I don't know if you can tell the bees are peeking out around the edges here. I really have no idea what to expect. I know there's been a lot of activity at the entrance of the hive. A lot of bees in here, but I don't know if they're all in the bottom box or you know how the how the hive is configured right now as far as bee population goes. What I am seeing right here, they're very gently gonna pull this out. First frame out, we got a significant amount of brood here. If you look real closely, we have some big drones. There's drones everywhere. Three, four, five. I think I counted five drones there. Maybe four. There's another one there, 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 there. So we got four or five drones on each side, it looks like, on this thing. We got larva in those cells right there. This side, we got a nice patch of brood. Now, I did pull a frame up from kind of towards the middle of the colony. There's plenty of space in between here. I was real careful and slow. It would have probably been better if I would have pulled a frame from over here where there aren't many bees. I can tell it's been a while since I've been in here because this stuff is all glued down really tight. Look at that. Bees are really calm. Such a beautiful day today. Now I really hammered these bees with oxalic acid back, I think late November on into December. I think I treated them six times a week apart, which is more than I, I know they say you should do that. However, there was a really big problem with mites. The first treatment I did on the bottom tray, there were thousands of mites. And so I knew I had to get on it and I treated all these colonies out here. These bees seem to be really thriving, seem to be really happy. In reality, they're unusually calm for this colony. So I'm really excited about it. Maybe they used to be agitated somewhat because they were loaded down with mites. I don't know, I'm sure that would make them feel sick and not very good, but you know, it was really too late when I treated them, but I'm glad I did because they had a real problem going on. Okay, I'm gonna put this box back together and then we'll go look in the bottom box. Now we're down to the bottom box. Look how wonderfully calm these bees are. It's just amazing. So beautiful. Such a beautiful day, such beautiful creatures. Smoke them a little bit. The population in this colony is not really what I kind of anticipated. This colony has never been a super highly populated one since I put it in here a year and a half ago. Um, I just don't know that the genetics of the bees I put in here were super, super strong. 
And I'm taking once again, very gently trying to remove it kind of towards the middle. That wasn't the wisest thing to do because that queen might have been on there. Lots of drones, lots of brood. And as you can see, got brood right here. It's, it's not a bad idea ever to start from the edge, go close to the edge or find a place where there is not, there's very little population, enough population of bees. Really not much happening on that frame. They're kind of running around kind of crazy. There were more bees in there than I anticipated when I first pulled that box off. I smoked them down. I think they kind of ran down pretty quickly. Uh, that one's stinging me right there. Her stinger is stuck in my skin. She's going to work herself around until she's able to get free of it. But it will pull her stinger out and ultimately she'll die. There she goes. There's the stinger sack. It's very critical when you get stung to get the stinger out as quickly as you can. Otherwise, it will continue to pump venom in your arm and it can cause unnecessary pain and swelling. The girls are getting a little bit impatient with me, I think. Just want to pull a frame out over here and see if we have more uh, brood over here on this side. And yes, we do. Look at that. Root all through here and this side also lots of brood we're gonna go one more and then we're gonna close it up i never worry too much about it if i see evidence of the queen i don't worry too much about actually finding her now right through here i'm we'll blowing them a little bit you can see this is all drone comb right here that's where the boy bees are being made uh, this was probably some comb maybe that I have one time from a cutout I did and uh, the bees have kind of built the comb in here kind of kind of wonky or it's possibly just some old foundation that's what it is this is some old wax foundation that have wire in it there's no telling how old this comb is but look at the bees look at all the bees slap me hive update is doing well if you remember a while back, I had a double deep sitting right here that was not doing well. We condensed them way down in hopes of saving them. Let's check them out and see what we got. <laughs> it's interesting, I was talking about how calm the bees were in that Apame hive and they stung my hands up pretty good. So they got me right there, right there, right there, right there. So <laughs> I spoke too soon. They weren't really nasty, but they did get me a few times in the hands. Look at these girls. Well, at first glance, looks to me like we made the right decision by condensing these bees down. I do need to pull these up very gently and I'm gonna start on the side on this. I don't know why I was, I don't know why I went from the middle on that other colony. Not the best plan typically. These bees also seem to be fairly calm, at least so far. And I like their attitude as far as just not running all over the frame. I really want to get more bees like this. One of my goals this year is to get a nicer bee on average. I don't mind if they're a little defensive, but some of my bees have gotten to be just almost unworkable. And I'm going to try and get better this year with having nicer bees, especially if I want to start selling more nukes and things like that. I want to have bees that people enjoy working. Look at all those bees. So I really think we did the right thing condensing them down allowing them to be more efficient with what they're doing, allowing them to keep the temperature under better control. And uh, I think these bees are on their way to doing really well. It's a good strong nuke right here. Not seeing a lot of food, which is a little bit of a concern. It's mostly starting to build up like crazy. Look at that, man. What a difference in how they were doing when we condensed them down. So it looks like the strategy worked. Plus, once again, I treated for mites. I treated them on the same schedule as the Apame. I know they had to have mites because I remember, if I'm not mistaken, I think I saw a bee with uh, deformed wings. They are so much more healthy. So I think condensing them down, allowing them to be more efficient and effective with their hive management and helping eliminate the mites has worked miracles for these girls. Let's pull this outside frame and see if they have any food. If not, I might have to slap a little food on them. Oh my gosh, look at all those bees. They're layered on there. They really have no food in here. They're working hard to build up. So I'm gonna have to go get some, uh, I've got a bucket feeder. 
over in the truck that's got some food in it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it on here and feed these girls because they definitely need it. Glad I checked because they would be in danger of starvation. I don't know if you can see or not, but these girls down here at the front of the hive, they are walking in. They don't want to be on that lid anymore. Check them out. They are marching right in. They want to get inside the hive. They don't realize I'm about to put that lid right back on there. This is the last one we're going to look at today. This was the colony of bees that was in a gourd late last summer. A friend of mine called me about some bees like in a martin gourd, a purple martin gourd, a little birdhouse. And I got them, been in here. And these bees have been pretty content pretty much the whole time to just not to really grow. Of course, it has been winter time, but they never really have just exploded. Even late last summer, they haven't done a lot of growing. So, so they're, just, they're content to stay on a couple of frames. Now, I don't know if they have carniolan tendencies where they just brood way down in the winter time. Also, this foundation right here, they haven't done a lot with it. Um, it is plastic, it is Pierco. I put these frames in here late in the season, so they really haven't really haven't had a lot of resources to build it out with. Now this one right here is drawn out pretty good. We just don't have a lot of bees in here. Um, now I'm not too concerned about it because it is still the winter time. And so some bees will tend to brood way down in the winter time. And this is a colony that was in a gourd. So I have no idea of their genetics. I don't know if they're primarily Italian, uh, primarily Carniolan, or just a, just a mutt of all kinds of different bees. And so each type of bee, each colony may have a different tendency depending on genetics as far as how they want to hold off in winter time and brood down. But they have been really content just not to grow. And that might be a good thing. They don't require as many food resources that way. Now I will tell you this frame right here, got a nice brood pattern right here. And it's kind of heavy. They got some honey up around the rim here. They're pulling in some resources from somewhere. So maybe they're getting primed to explode. I, I, kind of tend to think that might be the case. They were treated along with all the other ones here in my backyard. There's the queen right there. If you can see her, she is right there. Really pretty queen. Let's pull out one more frame. This frame has some weight to it as well. Also has some brood coming on right there. So it's a good pattern. And this side actually has some honey on it. Down around here, we got some honey. And so they're doing pretty good. So I'm pretty excited. The bees are looking good. Did a good job of treating them for mites. I got way behind uh, late last summer while I was losing all those colonies out of my out yards, but I just hit them hard in the late fall, early winter. And maybe that's gonna save me on these bees in my backyard. When I first popped the lid off, I only saw a few bees right through here and I'm thinking, man, they're not doing much, but you saw how they're building up and I'm, I'm excited about it. I think they're gonna do well. But what did y'all think of these backyard bees? I'm pretty excited about it. I think they're going to do great. The key was trading for those mites when I did. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure I would have lost some. I do have one this little week, but the rest of them seem to be doing well. That's it for now. That was fun. January 31st, I think it's 67 degrees out here. At least it was last time I checked. What a day. Y'all take care. Be safe. And we'll catch y'all on the next one.